Okay, let's talk about these questions. Number one, why are Brighetto and Poggio in the play? What is their function? A few groups took this question. Everyone agrees that Brighetto is an idiot and Poggio is his servant and so has no choice but to follow him around and follow orders. So this situation itself is pretty funny. A normal, actually kind of smart servant who has to follow around his stupid boss. Um, yeah, so the main role of Brighetto and Poggio in this play is as comic relief. In all of the doom and gloom and murder and incest, these two guys are the only two who make people laugh. They make the audience laugh, but they also make the other characters laugh. Um, in the story, Brighetto is also pursuing Annabella at the behest of his uncle Donato. Donato wants him to marry Annabella um, so that he can have a good marriage. Otherwise, Brighetto is such an idiot that nobody would want to marry him. Um, so whenever Brighetto shows up and says something stupid, everybody laughs and Donato is once again like annoyed that his nephew is so stupid. So um, basically any time they appear, we have a good example. Um, but we can take a look at page 438. This is act two, scene six. Right, so in this scene, um, Donato shows up and tries to uh, help Brighetto pursue Annabella. And he does this by trying to give her a letter that he wrote, but he pretends that Brighetto wrote the letter. Um, unbeknownst to Donato, Brighetto himself did write a letter another letter, and it's of course a very stupid letter. So on uh, page 438 here, as they are talking, enter Brighetto and Poggio, they actually show up. And Donato has the expected reaction. He says to himself, aside means he says to himself, oh coxcomb, uh, which is he's, he's cursing Brighetto. What does he make here? Why does he come here? Brighetto, where's my uncle, sirs? Donato, what's the news now? Brighetto, save you, uncle, save you, which means, you know, good health, good fortune. You must not think I come for nothing, masters. Masters just means misters. And how, and how is it? So he's saying, I came for a reason. And then he's saying, you must be thinking, what is the reason? How is it? What, you have read my letter? Ah, there, I tickled you with faith. So like when he mentions his letter, everybody is kind of laughing. So he thinks, ah, I must have tickled you. I made you laugh. Uh, in Chinese, tickle is sao yang. Uh, and then Pajo, poor guy, adds a small sexual joke. But twere better you had tickled her in another place. So he's saying, uh, you would have been more effective using your hands than your words. Brighetto, Sarah, sweetheart, so he's talking to Annabella. I'll tell thee a good jest, a good joke, and riddle what is. So guess what the story will be. Guess what the joke will be. Like, what an idiot, right? I'll tell you a joke. Guess what the joke is. <sighs> Annabella, you say you'd tell me. True. So Brighetto starts telling his, his so-called joke. As I was walking just now on the street, I met a swaggering fellow, somebody who's walking, taking up a lot of space, would need to take the wall of me. So if you look at the bottom of the page, it says that in those days, the streets were built so that the middle of the street is a gutter for wastewater and like animal horse shit, that kind of thing. And so the, the two sides of the street are the cleanest parts. 
So here, Brigetto is saying this person wanted to walk along the wall where I was walking. He wants to take the wall of me. And because he did thrust me, so he pushed me. Uh, I think pushed him into the middle of the street. I very valiantly called him rogue. So as uh, I very bravely, very chivalrously, like a great man, called him uh, a villain, a rogue, somebody bad. He hereupon bade me draw. So at this point, he told me to draw my dagger or draw my rapier, I guess. Um, today we would say, you have a problem? Do you want to fight? I told him I had more wit than so. I said I was too smart to try fighting you. But when he saw that I would not, he did so maul me with the hilts of his rapier. So when he saw that I would not fight him, he used his own rapier to hit me. Maul means attack. A hilt, a rapier is a kind of short sword, right? But he's saying that he used the hilts of his rapier. The hilt is the part that you hold. So the guy attacked him with a sword, but he attacked him with the back of his sword. That's how much the guy does, does not care about Brigetto. He did so maul me with the hilts of his rapier that my head sung. So my head was, was throbbing. I was hearing things in my head whilst my feet capered in the kennel. So while I was stumbling around in the gutter in the middle of the street. And that's his joke. <laughs> it's funny, but not for the reasons that he thinks. So again, Donato is like, oh my God, this guy. Was ever the like ass seen? Has the world ever seen such an idiot? Ass originally means donkey, but it also means like a stupid person. Even today, the word ass can mean somebody who makes himself look foolish. Annabella, and what did you all this while? So at this point, what did you do? Brigetto, laugh at him for a gull. I laughed at him for being so stupid. <laughs> Till I see the blood run about mine ears. So then I saw that there was blood around my ears. And then I could not choose but find in my heart to cry. This is also a stupid thing to say. To cry just means to shout loudly. But the way he says it, he says, uh, the idea is I had no choice but to cry. Something inside of me made me shout. Obviously, that's not true, right? He's shouting because it hurts. Till a fellow with a broad beard, they say he is a new come doctor, called me into his house and gave me a plaster, something to cover the injury, cover the wound. Look you, here it is. So this is the plaster, it's right here on my head. And sir, there was a young wench or a young lady washed my face and hands, not lady, sorry, young woman, washed my face and hands most excellently, a faith. I shall love her as long as I live for it. Did she not, Paggio? And Paggio says yes and kissed him too. So he goes to see a doctor, a new doctor. The doctor takes care of him. There's a young woman who helps wash his face and hands. He falls in love with a young woman. And Paggio says that the young woman kissed him also. Remind me again, what is Brigetto trying to do here? He's trying to pursue Annabella. And he ends his story by saying he falls in love with another woman. So you get an example of like what kind of humor they bring to the play. Um, and just a brief mention here, the doctor he's talking about is actually Richard Detto. The young woman is Philotis. And um, at the end of Act 3, which you were supposed to finish before this week, Brigetto gets killed by Grimaldi. So what is his function? What is the function of Brigetto and Poggio in this play? First of all, 
to be funny, to give the audience kind of a break, but also to create a contrast. After you listen to them being funny and stupid, and then in the next scene somebody dies, it feels even darker. It feels even more serious. And the last thing is when Brighetto himself gets killed. It's even more tragic. Brighetto is probably the, the best person in the play. He is the most innocent. He is the most virtuous. He doesn't actively do anything to other people. He falls in love. And then he gets killed. And he gets killed by accident. Grimaldi isn't trying to kill him. Grimaldi is trying to kill Soranzo, but because it's dark and like there's a mix up and then he stabs somebody and it turns out to be Brighetto. So his death also adds a real sense of tragedy to this play, as one group mentioned uh, when answering this question. Paggio is in comedy what we call the straight man. He is not stupid, but he's forced to react to a stupid guy, and his reactions also are funny. Question two. This is also a popular question today. Uh, Giovanni says that because his sister is so beautiful, she must be a good person. And uh, nobody today agreed with this idea. Let's take a look. 2522. So this is after Giovanni and Annabella have decided that they will enter a relationship with each other. Like Giovanni pursued her and then Annabella confessed that she also loves him. And so they, you know. Uh, and so here he, Giovanni goes back to the friar to tell him this thing has happened. I'm not exactly sure why he has to tell the friar. He knows the friar doesn't agree. I think Giovanni is just showing off. He's like, you said you, we can't do it. Well, guess what? We did it. Uh, and of course, the friar still doesn't agree. And he says again, uh, you know, you, you must ask for forgiveness and stop being uh, sinful. And Giovanni again tries to convince the friar that no, his love for his sister is a good thing. So line 12. Father, in this you are uncharitable, so you're not being generous. What I have done, I'll prove both fit and good. Fit means appropriate. It is a principle which you have taught when I was yet your scholar, when I was your student, you taught me this that the frame and composition of the mind doth follow the frame and composition of the body. So frame and composition here just means like the, the mindset or the perspective. Wait, what page is this? 436. Um, but notice here it says that the mind follows the body. If we look at the bottom. Of the soul, the body formed. If you look at the bottom, it says something different. Or it's a comparison. Edmund Spencer says, for of the soul, the body form doth take. Let's translate this. The body takes form from the soul. So according to this expert, the soul determines the body. But here Giovanni says the frame and composition of the mind follow the body. So here he's saying the body creates the soul. So even here he gets his philosophy wrong. Uh, but anyways, his argument, uh, the mind follows the, so the body. So where the body's furniture is beauty, the mind's must needs be virtue. So when the body is beautiful, the soul must be good. Which allowed, so if you agree, virtue itself is reason but refined. So virtue is the end point of reason. If you follow right reason 
at all the way to the end, you will end up with goodness. And love the quintessence of that. So he's saying reason, uh, the highest point of reason is virtue, and the highest point of virtue is love. All of these words are technically true, but Giovanni is twisting the meaning. Reason here means doing the right thing, following what God says you should do. But here he uses reason to mean like smart and intelligent and has logic. And it is true that love is the highest form of virtue, but that's talking about a general love, love toward your neighbor, love toward your enemy, love toward other people. It's not talking about romantic love. But Giovanni is talking about the romantic love between himself and his sister. So again, the words are correct, but the meaning is wrong. This proves my sister's beauty being rarely fair is rarely virtuous. Therefore, because my sister is so beautiful, she must be very good. Chiefly in her love. And how is she good? The best part of her is her love. And chiefly in that love, her love to me. And when I say her love, I mean her love for me. So here exactly is where her, uh, his logic goes wrong. If hers to me, then so is mine to her. So if her love for me is the highest form of virtue, then my love for her is the same high virtue. Since in the causes are effects alike. Because if the, the cause is the same, then the effect must be the same. I don't think a single idea in this paragraph is right. Like, it's very similar to different ideas from philosophy and theology, but not a single idea is correct, which is really kind of impressive uh, that Giovanni can get so much wrong. It's like listening to Donald Trump give a speech. Uh, right, so the question is, do you agree with his ideas? And thank goodness nobody agrees. Even on the surface, right? Just because Annabella is beautiful does not mean she is a good person. Um, simply from the logic, from the very beginning, we just said that Giovanni got his cause and effect wrong. It should be that a good soul will lead to uh, an external presentation. But here he's saying, because, <coughs> sorry, because she is beautiful, therefore she is good. So he gets it backwards. Um, but we can also talk about that philosophy, right? A good person will present their goodness uh, externally. The idea is, if somebody is good, you can see or you can feel that they are a good person. Uh, and so when I brought this idea, the correct version of this idea to the groups that are discussing this, most of them agreed. Most of you agreed. And it's true, right? If you think back to your own experience. There are some people when uh, if you when you first look at them. They, they don't seem like very beautiful, right? They seem like normal. But when you start to get to know them and it turns out that they're a good person, it, they can start to look more attractive or alluring. It's like uh, beauty is not just subjective, right? When we say something is subjective, we mean that different people have different ideas. But beauty is also subjective in the sense that when you change, your idea of beauty can also change. So even looking at the same person, if you think uh, if you your ideas about this person change, your aesthetic judgment of their beauty can also change. And this philosophical idea, I think uh, all of the groups that discussed this question agreed with. Um, and that's why, like, you know, sometimes, especially in the movies, right, sometimes a character will first appear and they're incredibly beautiful, incredibly handsome. 
but then it turns out that they're not a good person and suddenly the fact that they're handsome or beautiful is actually working against them it's like the beauty is like a dirty kind of beauty and the reason could be the same as this philosoph uh, philosophical idea question three nobody took this question uh, so let's talk about it together um, so in this week's assigned reading, Annabella is persuaded to marry Saranzo. But Giovanni does not change his mind. Do you think this makes the play sexist? Uh, and then I added a, another thing to make the question more complicated, which is Giovanni uh, hopes that Annabella be not all woman, which means he hopes that Annabella will remain faithful. So he's using the word woman as somebody who is not faithful. So let's take a look at these two parts. 3, 11, 1. Well, you know, there is a reason that Annabella uh, marries Saranzo, or agrees to marry Saranzo. Did I read that wrong? Is it 9-1? Oh, I wrote it wrong. Sorry. It's probably 391. It's not. Is it 2111? What am I doing? <laughs> okay, okay. Hang on. Let me find this. OK, so at the end of Act 3, Grimaldi dies. Uh, sorry, no, Gr Grimaldi gets sent away. Uh, it's probably 361. Yes, sorry, it's 6, not, not 11, sorry. So here, uh, the scene is in the friar's room, the friar in his study, sitting in a chair, Annabella is kneeling uh, in front of him, I guess, and whispering to him. There's a table, there are lights. She's crying. She wrings her hands, so she's like nervous. And the friar says, I am glad to see this penance. A penance is a self accepted punishment for a sin. So like in the Catholic Church, you can go to confession and confess your sins, and afterward, uh, it's like God will pretend like it never happened. But it's not just confession. After you confess to a priest, the priest will say, you have to do this, this, this as punishment. And after you finish that penance, then God forgives your sin. Usually the penance for like a small sin is like you have to pray a few times like a few dozen times you have to give money to the church whatever um here the friar says i'm glad to see this penance for believe me you have unripped a soul so foul and guilty as i must tell you true unripped here just means confessed so your confession is so is of something that is so dirty and guilty i marvel how the earth hath borne you up that I, I can't believe you're still standing here. I can't believe you didn't go directly to hell. That's how bad it is. But weep, so cry, weep on. These tears may do you good. Weep faster yet whilst I do read a lecture. So keep crying and I will like uh, teach you about the religious aspect of your situation. Because, you know, he's a priest. But from this scene, right, he says, Penance, confession or unripped, and then crying, uh, it may do you good. We can tell Annabella has confessed uh, her love for Giovanni to the friar. So she's already starting to uh, go in a different direction. But why? Well, in Act 3, Scene 4, uh, 
Maybe not scene four, maybe scene three. Yeah, scene four. Uh, here, um, hang on, hang on. Act three, scene three, Annabella kind of faints. Scene two. Here we go, okay, yeah, yeah, I found it. Act three, scene two, this is page 440. Um, in this scene, Soranzo is trying to pursue Annabella, and Annabella refuses him. He, she rejects Soranzo. She says, line 61, if I hereafter find that I must marry, hereafter means later, find that I must marry, it shall be you or none. So she's kind of letting him down easy, right? No, but if in the future I do marry somebody, I will marry you, but not now. And Soranzo takes this uh, consolation prize. I'm way jump. I take that promise. Suddenly, Annabella, oh, oh, my head. Soranzo, what's the matter? Not well? Sun Bing Lama, are you sick? Annabella, oh, I begin to sicken. So, yes, I feel sick. Uh, and so they call for a doctor. Uh, the doctor is Richard Detto, who is pretending to be a doctor. We'll come back to that. Act three, scene three. Uh, enter Giovanni and Putana. Putana, oh, so he, she's talking to Giovanni. Oh, sir, we are all undone. Like, we're finished. We're ruined. Quite undone, utterly undone, and shamed forever. Your sister, oh, your sister. Giovanni, whatever. For heaven's sake, speak. How does she? Uh, Pitana, oh, that ever I was born to see this day. It's like, I was cursed to see this day. Why must I know this? Giovanni, she is not dead, huh? Is she? Pitana, dead? No, she is quick. Quick means alive, but it's a pun. We'll, we'll come back to this very quickly. Uh, she is quick. Tis worse. She is with child. Uh, quick can also mean pregnant. So, uh, Annabella is now pregnant. The father is obviously Giovanni. Um, so the, the way they deal with this is they find a fake doctor. And the fake doctor makes a fake diagnosis, right? She, he's saying, oh, there's nothing wrong with her. She's fine. She's like tired, whatever. But this gives the reason why Annabella must be married to somebody. And so uh, she confesses to the friar. The friar convinces her to marry Soranzo. They get married. Do you think that the play is therefore sexist? Well, it, it doesn't. How do I say this? It is true that if you changed uh, Annabella and Giovanni's positions, this would be impossible for Giovanni, right? He can't get pregnant. He doesn't have to deal with this. Um, so from that perspective, uh, if this is the way that the play wants to deal with the situation, it's not sexist. But then you have the second part of the question. Uh, 3, 2, 11. OK, so here is uh, the when Soranzo is talking to Florio, because if you want to marry a woman, you have to talk to her dad. So Soranzo is talking to Florio. And Giovanni is kind of secretly listening. Uh, so here, Florio, my lord Soranzo, though I must confess, the proffers that are made me have been great in marriage of my daughter. Yet the hope of your still rising honors have prevailed above all other jointures. So many great men have tried to win the hand of my daughter. But because you have a bright and promising future, right? You're still rising honors. You have won above everybody else. 
And then he says, here she is. She knows my mind. She knows my decision. Uh, and so he's setting up Saranzo and with his daughter Annabella so that they can chat. Uh, and Saranzo says, I thank you, sir. And so Giovanni says to himself, sister, be not all woman. Think on me. Don't forget me just because of this Saranzo guy. So it does seem like Giovanni's idea of women is kind of sexist, right? He's saying like if you simply change if you sim if you change your mind simply because Saranzo is rich and famous, uh, you would just be like any other woman. So it does seem like this perspective is kind of sexist. But to bring it back to the original question, is the play sexist? In other words, does the play agree with Giovanni? I think it's pretty clear that the play does not hold Giovanni up as a perfect man. First of all, he falls in love with his sister. That's not something we should try to do. Um, but then uh, we will see next week that the way he deals with this marriage is also not something we should learn from. Very classic, don't try this at home kind of thing. Um, so once we understand how the play looks at Giovanni, we can see a kind of distance between Giovanni's perspective and what the play tells us should be the ideal perspective. So to answer the general question, no, this does not make the play sexist. Does that make sense? Kind of. You can go home, watch the recording, think about it some more. Question four. This was also a popular question today. So as we mentioned, Grimaldi accidentally kills Brighetto. He runs away. Uh, and then he runs to the cardinal. And the cardinal says, uh, OK, I'll take you in. I'll send you to Rome. And then he stops everybody else from chasing Grimaldi. Do you think this is right? Let's take a look at this. Three nine. Fifty five ish. OK, so. Um, Grimaldi has run away and they're currently talking about uh, who is he? Why did he do this? Enter Cardinal and Grimaldi. Why, how now, friends? How now just means hello. What saucy mates are you that know nor duty nor civility? How dare you not treat me and Grimaldi with respect? How dare you fight in the street? That kind of thing. Are we a person fit to be your host? Or is our house become your common inn to beat our doors at pleasure? Uh, right, so they are here to talk to the cardinal. They saw Grimaldi run into the cardinal's house, so they knock on the cardinal's door. Uh, the cardinal brings Grimaldi out and he says basically, how dare you disturb me? Uh, what such haste is yours as that it cannot wait fit times? Is something so urgent you can't wait until tomorrow? This is, you know, it's a classic um, VIP reaction, right? Uh, can't it wait till tomorrow? Did you have to find me now? Uh, and then he says, I know why you're here. Oh, your news is here before you. You have lost a nephew, Donato, last night by Grimaldi slain. Slain means killed. Is that your business? Is that why you're here? Well, sir, we have knowledge on it. Let that suffice. <laughs> wow. He says, we, he means I, the cardinal. I already know that this happened. That is enough. It's enough that I know. These guys want revenge, and the cardinal is saying, I know what happened. Don't worry about it. And then Grimaldi, in front of everybody, says basically, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I killed the wrong guy. I didn't mean to kill him. Please uh, protect me and save my soul. Right, he says, uh, 
And though my fault to him were merely chance, so it was an accident. Yet humbly I submit me to your grace. Your grace is the cardinal. So I submit myself to the cardinal to do with me as you please, and you can punish me however you want. Uh, and he was kneeling. So Cardinal, rise up Grimaldi. You citizens of Parma, if you seek for justice, know as nuncio from the Pope, as somebody who is close to the Pope, for this offense, I here receive Grimaldi into his holiness's protection. His holiness means the Pope. So I take Grimaldi into the protection of the Pope. Protection here just means that nobody else can deal with him. Only the Pope can decide what to do with Grimaldi. So it does not mean that Grimaldi can get away. It means that the Pope may or may not punish him. So far, it seems OK, but then he is no common man, but nobly born. Does that make a difference? He's not a regular guy. He's a noble. Therefore, you cannot punish him. Is that what he's saying? Of prince's blood, so he, he is from the bloodline of princes. Though you, Sir Florio, thought him too mean a husband for your daughter. Mean here means low. So Florio, even though you thought that Grimaldi is not worthy of your daughter, in fact, he is a very noble man. If more you seek for, you must go to Rome, for he shall thither. Th thither means go there. Learn more wit for shame. So don't you have any common sense? Wit means knowledge or intelligence. Bury your dead. Away, Grimaldi, leave him. <laughs> this is not a very respectful way to say goodbye, right? Bury your dead, leave him. So it's not just the decision, it's also the attitude that's a problem here. Like, yes, this is a Christian society. If the cardinal wants to, he can do this, but he doesn't have to do it this way. He's saying, like, Grimaldi came to me. I'll protect him. You guys go do whatever. Don't bother us anymore. No compassion, no condolences, nothing. And so Donato's reaction, is this a churchman's voice? Voice. Is that a churchman talking like this? Dwells justice here? Does justice live here in this house? Florio. Justice is fled to heaven and comes no nearer. So they don't agree. Uh, the question here, is this right for the cardinal to do? Well, as, as uh, I just said, he has the right to do this if he wants to. It is a Christian society. Uh, that it's perfectly legal. The problem is with his attitude. Um, the church is supposed to be like full of compassion and mercy and love, but the cardinal just seems like he does not want to be among these other people. He thinks he himself is so special and so powerful. So that part is definitely not right. Um, and then we see that Donato and Florio, their reaction is uh, because of the cardinal's attitude, they disagree with the decision. As I was saying to the groups that took this question, they live in a Christian society. They're supposed to follow God and the representatives of God. And yet here they disagree. But they disagree because they notice that the representative of God is not the same as God himself. God is good. God is perfect. God is all knowing, all powerful. But the cardinal is a human being. So when you have such a terrible person representing God and the Pope, is it any surprise that ordinary people would uh, disagree with this perfectly legal decision on behalf of God? Christianity is supposed to be about forgiveness. So it seems likely that 
Grimaldi will confess to the Pope and the Pope will ask penance of him and then forgive him uh, in the name of God. And that's fine. In fact, that is the better option than sending Grimaldi to prison. But because the Cardinal is such a shithead, uh, nobody agrees with this decision. So like even in a Christian society, the people here, it seems like it doesn't take a lot to change their mind uh, whether to agree with the church. And then you also have Giovanni and Friar Bonaventura, right? Bonaventura is also a priest representing the church. He gives good religious advice, but Giovanni doesn't agree. Giovanni decides to go against him. Isn't that interesting? Uh, and do you think that says something about this society in the story? It seems that the foundation of this religious society is not very solid. Like if the religious foundation were stronger, the reaction to the cardinal may have been something like, well, that's not very nice, but he is the cardinal and he, the pope is the leader of our religion, so I guess we can only agree. But that's not what happens. They said the cardinal is a terrible guy. We are against this decision. So it does seem like the foundation of the religious society is not as strong as before. Uh, and this connects with the historical period. We call this the English Renaissance, uh, 16th, 17th centuries. Um, it's when uh, you have new discoveries in science, like the idea that the Earth revolves around the sun, that in, in, instead of the sun going around the Earth, uh, you have the invention of the telescope. Um, you have uh, new ways of looking at science and uh, experiments. So there's slowly more and more focus on the human world instead of just heaven and hell. Uh, so this seems to be connected to that kind of idea. Also, uh, this play was first performed uh, around 1633. The English Civil War began in 1642, not too long after. So in this period, there is all, already a lot of religious tension between Catholics and Protestants. Uh, and one reason why Protestants are against the Catholic Church is because the church leaders do not seem to be very good and compassionate people. In fact, they seem quite corrupt. So this could also be connected to those ideas. Um, the Reformation, Zhong Zhao began in 1517, long before this. Uh, so these ideas were already spreading around Europe, around England. Finally, question five, nobody took this question. Uh, even if she marries Saranzo, do you think Annabella will always love Giovanni? It's a very open-ended question. Could be yes, could be no. It depends on how you look at their relationship. Uh, because remember, it's Giovanni who first confesses his love to her, and then she agrees. And it is true that she does agree. They secretly get married. Um, it, it's what we call a... Um, I, don't, I forgot what it's called, but the kind of marriage they have is... Um, in those days, there are two kinds of marriages. You can get married in church in front of a priest, or you can get married secretly and uh, use God as your witness. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but that's what they did. So they are technically religiously married. Uh, Annabella has a, a fetus in her from that marriage. But she ends up crying and weeping and confessing and deciding to marry Soranzo. So does she still love Giovanni? Well, again, could be either way. If you think that she um, 
is suffering and that sh she thinks the reason for her suffering is Giovanni, then no, probably she now, I guess, hates him. But if you think that she still, it's possible she does still love him and that she's doing this simply because she wants to live. She doesn't want to be shunned from society. She wants to be able to go to heaven, that kind of thing. But that in her heart, she still has feelings for Giovanni. We will see the answer next week. Uh, there's a there's a final scene between Giovanni and Annabella, and we will see what she really feels. OK, do you have questions about this week's discussion? All right, homework for next week. Please finish the play. And uh, next week I will also introduce the next unit on Paradise Lost and I will give you a new handout. OK, see you next week. If you have not yet signed in, please come to the front and sign in.